Hey guys, I hope you're all well. So in today's video, I'm gonna be covering something that I have been asked for by a few people, and that is how do I get gigs in pubs, bars, and restaurants? So this is something that if you are a musician, if you do have a skill set in music, um, I play guitar and sing, but maybe you do something else. Maybe you are a violin player or like play piano and sing is also a very popular one. Or maybe you have backing tracks and you are just a singer. I know people who do this as well. So you don't just have to play guitar and sing. You could do uh, play other instruments as well. So in your local town and city, there will be lots of venues, lots of pubs, bars, and restaurants who will likely have live music. It's a great way of drawing customers in, keeping them entertained while they spend money. Generally, it's going to be on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday night. Um, normally, places don't really like to have music earlier on in the week because the weekends tend to be their most busy period. So Thursday to Sunday is going to be when most of these venues are going to be looking to have musicians come and play. So because these venues are typically their main revenue source is food and alcohol, uh, they tend not to have a dedicated booking agent or company providing acts to them. I know some of them do, but many of them just have the, have the like bar manager, the person in, con in charge of everything, because they're quite small businesses a lot of the time. They have uh, their manager who actually books the acts and has a roster of acts to choose from. So this is the person you're going to want to get in touch with when reaching out to venues. So before reaching out to these venues, you're going to want to make sure that you have a set list of really polished songs. Ideally, I'd recommend around about 30 songs. This will, this will give you about two hours worth of material, maybe even two and a half hours worth of material, depending on how long the songs are. And I'd recommend you keep the songs very upbeat. You can throw in a couple of ballads in there, but the because these places, they want to keep people ch talking, they want to keep people entertained, upbeat, well-known covers is what's going to do that. So when choosing songs, I recommend you pick well-known, upbeat covers that suit your voice and your style. Here are some which I play, which tend to go down pretty well. I'm not saying use these, but these are ones which tend to go down quite well. Songs like Superstition by Stevie Wonder, Naive by The Kooks, Sweet Home Alabama, Hold Back the River by James Bay or Dancing in the Moonlight by Top Loader are some examples of songs which just everyone knows. They're upbeat, they're lively, they're quite fun and they keep everyone kind of entertained. If you go in there and you start playing like really like Lana Del Rey ballads, people are going to fall asleep and they're just going to talk over the top of you or leave. So I'd recommend you keep it fun, upbeat and stick to the well-known covers. So obviously the main difference between playing a pub gig you're playing covers to people who don't know who you are. So you can't be just playing originals music. You have to be playing stuff that people know. It's different to if you're playing at a festival or a venue where people have actually paid to come and see you play and they know your songs. But if you're not an established artist and you're playing at pubs, you're going to have to play covers that people know and recognize. So once you have 30 songs, really well practiced and polished, you want to make sure that you have the right equipment to play the gig. There is nothing more amateur than asking to borrow someone's PA system or even their guitar. Like, it's just, how is anyone going to take you seriously? If you want to be paid for your music, you have to act like a professional. So have the right, the right equipment. Um, I would highly recommend the Bose L1 Compact PA. That's what I've been using for years and it has done me fine. It's perfect for these kind of smaller venues. It's a really popular one. You can grab that from most music stores. You can get one in the link below. It's totally fine if you just want to play acoustic guitar and sing. However, if you want to really step up the game and create more of a dynamic performance, get, investing in a loop pedal will really help you do this. I use the Boss RC1, which is the most bog standard Boss loop station that you can get, but it works great for me. Uh, you can get more expensive, more elaborate ones with like two tracks as well, which is like the one Ed Sheeran likes to use. But for me, this one works fine and I like to keep things really simple. Let's say you wanna come into a chorus, you wanna layer things up for the chorus so it really sounds big you can do that with a loop pedal. Also, an octave pedal is great for adding the lower octave on your guitar, so you can kind of create a bass sound, you can make it sound like a bass guitar, 
and you can really layer up the instruments there and more make it sound more like a like a full band so that is something i would recommend investing in if you want to take your solo set to the next level but you absolutely don't need this you can just play with an acoustic guitar plug straight into the pa no problem i gig like that for years and it works just fine so it's entirely up to you so then the last thing before you start reaching out to venues is have a social media presence. Set up a YouTube channel if you don't have one already and upload some, some versions of the songs which you are gonna be playing at the venues in as good quality as possible. Get yourself a decent camera. Sony A600 is great and fairly affordable and get yourself like a, a Rode mic, shot, shotgun mic to go on top of there and record some videos so you have a presence on social media. Instagram is almost like the modern day business card as well, so I'd recommend you have a presence on Instagram and YouTube. They're probably the two most common ones. And also it doesn't hurt to have a Facebook page. A lot of pubs are on Facebook, so you can direct directly message them through Facebook. So I would say YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram are probably the three most important social media accounts to have. So let's look at how to land gigs. If you don't drive, you're gonna to have to stick to your, your very local area, but if you do have a car, it does give you some other options. You could use public transport as well, but lugging a PA system around on a bus doesn't sound too fun. So having a car definitely makes things a lot easier. And then you wanna to go to Google. Go to Google Maps and Google the local venues, the local pubs, restaurants, and bars in your area which have live music. Then this will o then open up Google Maps. It will populate a list of all the pubs in, let's say you search for um, venue pubs in my city with live music. It will come up with a list of all of those on Google Maps. Then open up a Google Sheet and just copy the name of each venue the phone number and the address of every venue. Let's say you just wanna reach out to like every venue in that city, just copy all onto that spreadsheet. This is your outreach list. Once you've done that, you're, you're then gonna call every venue on that list, okay? When you call the venue, you might get through to someone who is just a bartender. Chances are you will not get through to the person who deals with the, the bookings. So if you do, here's what I would say. So when you call up, you wanna say, introduce yourself. Hi there, my name is Sam. I was just wondering, uh, do you have live music at your venue? If it's a no, then say, well, is this something that you would be open to? And if they say, yes, we do have live music actually, uh, say, great, well, I'm actually a musician myself. I was wondering who deals with the, the bookings at the venue. And then if it's the manager, they might say, oh, well, that's actually me, myself. Or if it's a bartender, say, oh, well, it's actually Sally, but she's not actually available right now. In which case you're gonna say, okay, no problem. Could I grab her contact details or when would be a good time to call back? Because there's one thing you never wanna do, never let them call you back. Some of them will say, okay, well, I'll pass your email or name and number onto the manager and get them to call you back. Guys, they will not call you back. You will never hear from them again. So if they do this, just say, okay, that's fine. Um, I will call back at a different time. When's the best time? When are they gonna be in? All right? Or if they are available at that time, you're gonna be on, they'll pass you over to the person who deals with the music bookings. And then you can say, hi, my name is Sam. I'm just a local musician in the area. I'm just looking to, uh, I just called up inquiring if you do live music and it sounds like you do. So I was wondering um, what would be the best way to potentially play at your venue. And then the manager will hopefully say, yes, we do have live music here. And then the manager will likely wanna hear some examples of your work. So in that case, I would get their email address and I'd say, look, I'll grab your email and I'll send you over some links and some information uh, via email. And then you can read through that and if all's great, then we can move forward from there and potentially get a date locked in. Perfect, end the conversation there. Thank you very much, I'll be in touch shortly. And then you cut it. So 
once you have that, that is a positive response. On your spreadsheet, you can mark that as orange, which means we're gonna follow up with them now via email. Then we're gonna email them. Here's a template of what I say, which has worked for me. So you wanna say, hi there, hopefully this reaches the right person. I just spoke to Sally on the phone regarding live music at your venue. I'm a local musician and would love to play at your venue. Here are some of my details. I'm a local, independent, acoustic guitarist. I have a, a set, I have a two hour set of well-known crowd-pleasing covers. And this is, you can tailor this to your own, but this is what I use, I say. And I use a loop pedal for a full lively sound and, and I can provide a PA and all the necessary audio equipment. Then I put links to my social media, I've got my Facebook, my YouTube and my website. And then say, if you're interested in having me play at your venue, I'd love to hear from you. I've also attached my press kit, which has my bio and links to my music also. Look forward to hearing from you. So this press kit, which I attached, you don't have to do this, but it looks better if you do. You can just knock this up in Canva and yeah, it's just a PDF which basically summarizes exactly what you do. So here's mine, it's just got a photo of me, guitarist, singer, songwriter, media kit, 2024, got your contact details, little bio, um, and then some links to your work. So music playlist, Facebook page, some re Facebook reviews. If you can get, if you have a Facebook page and you can get some good reviews on there, that really helps as well. And then links to YouTube channel and website. So it's basically the information I've already provided, just summarized in a PDF. All right. So once you've said that, leave it there. Wait two two to three weeks if you haven't heard back anything from them after two weeks you want to follow up because owners of these pubs and restaurants they're very busy they're constantly dealing with staff customers day in day out and they're stressed and they don't have much time so sometimes an email will just slip through and they'll forget about it so send a follow-up a couple of weeks later so you want to say hi there i hope you're well i wanted to follow up on my previous email about playing live music at your venue just to recap, I'm a local acoustic guitarist and singer-songwriter with a two-hour set of popular covers. I use a loop pedal to create a full lively sound and can provide all the necessary audio equipment. Here's my links again. And I've attached my press kit once more, which includes my bio and music links. So look forward to, to your response, best Sam. So guys, that is it. I would leave it there. So that is my outreach process. You will not land every gig. I think my conversion rate is like 10%. Like I'll call 100 venues and I'll book like 10 of them. So some people, some venues just don't have live music. Uh, some of them will be full booked up for the rest of the year. And they, they just say, yeah, call us back. Um, but it's a numbers game. So you just want to dedicate some time each week, to do some outreach, do the emails, do the follow-ups, and you will get booked, guys. You will get gigs. Um, in terms of how much to charge, I would start out, if you're just starting out, you're brand new to this, I would recommend you start out between 100 and 150 pounds for two 45-minute sets. Um, you don't want to go lower than 100 because it does undersell you and people will just not value you if they don't pay for it. And... These pubs, that, 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 is, that is not a lot of money. A lot of musicians charge way more than that, like 250, 300 even for, for like two hours worth of music. So it just depends on how experienced you are, where you're playing. But to build your confidence initially and just to get the ball rolling, I would say start out between 100 and 150 for two 45 minute sets. Then once you build confidence and you get busier, you can raise your rates to 150, 200, 250 when you get a lot more experienced and in demand um, and yeah this is a great way to earn an extra income stream from your music by doing these gigs or potentially you want to go full time into this if you live in a big enough city with enough venues uh, you could do this full time but there has to be enough opportunities there if you're living in a small village chances are you have like five pubs in the local area, you aren't gonna be able to do this full time, but it could be an additional income stream and a way to make money from your passion. So really hope this helps guys. Hope that answers 
any questions that you might have had. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.